Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. In this video, we're going to learn about t.xyz. Okay, so what is t.xyz? So it's a multi-language package manager created by Max Hamill, the founder of Homebrew. And I like to think of it as giving me a sandbox area where I can do stuff in multiple different languages and kind of connect them together. And what I want to show you in this video is a three-part script. So script number one, print the version of Python as a JSON object extract the version property using the JQ library, and then finally parse the version string into its major, minor, and patch parts using a little Rust script. Uh, so let's start by installing T. So it uses one of those cool command line installers where you do single command and then it installs it. Uh, but what's nice about this one is it prompts you along the way. Do you want to install it? Uh, it tells you where it's going to be stored. So it's going to be under the .t folder. Then it asks me, hey, do you want to create a symlink? Okay, cool, yeah, I'll do that. And do you want to add it to the parser? Yeah, that's fine as well. Now let's try it out. So if we call T, uh, we'll just get the usage. Uh, and in particular, I want you to look under the, the modes. So you can see there's minus X, that's called magic mode. And then we've got the omitted mode as well. And so we're going to be using those uh, throughout this video. We can also do read link uh, with where is T to see just to check where it is. And you can see it's under dot T and then T dot X, Y, Z. And then it's under there a little bit further. Uh, and we can also uh, ls the t folder and see what we've got installed at the moment. So these are called pantries and we've got t.xyz and we've got charm.sh and there will be more of those as we go. So let's start by looking at our version.py file. So you can see here, literally all it does, it gets the platform module, prints out the version, that's it. And what we're gonna do now is how we're gonna, how we're gonna run it. Um, so as I say, t has the concept of pantries. And if we look on the GitHub page, it describes what a pantry is. It's metadata to install an open source package. And it generally will install an open source package and then a bunch of dependencies that are defined in a metadata file as well. And if we click through to pantry.core, we can see under the projects directory, we can see lots of these different pantries. So we've got one for Python, there's NPM, there's Ruby, there's Rust, there's one for JQ, there's GitHub, there's loads of stuff under here that we can, uh, that we can get installed uh, inside T. And we can also do an ls on the .t, t, y, t x, y, z var pantry projects. And you can see the sort of similar, similar list of pantries. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to call t plus python.org. And that's going to give us a shell with the latest version of Python installed in there. So we'll have to give it a few seconds. We'll speed it up uh, for the sake of the video. And so you can see now we've got a shell. Uh, we can call echo dollar path. And we can see on there, we've, see we've got pip, we've got Python. We've got a few other things on the path as well. And now inside that shell, we can call python version.py and it prints out our JSON um, structured version and 3.11.1. So, so far, so good. So let's exit the T shell and let's have a look under the t.t folder now. As you can see, there's lots more uh, pantries or packages installed now, so that's cool. Uh, what we can also do with T is we don't actually have to go inside the shell, so we can actually just call it uh, directly. So we can say t plus python.org and then you know, python version.py, same thing, prints out the version. We could do the magic version, so t minus capital X, python uh, version.py, and again, it runs it, still, still good. We can also get it to infer what it thinks we want to do, so we can just say t version.py. Uh, I'm not sure like, quite how accurate this one is, but at least it works in this case. Okay, so that's the first bit. Now we want to have a look, we're going to have a look at our Rust script that's going to pull apart that, that string. And so you can see here, we've got, a, we've got a file in Rust. It takes in a string, it splits um, on the, the period um, character, and it then destructures a slice of the vector and pulls out, like depending on what we've, what we've got. So if we've got like an invalid um, version, it's going to tell, it, tell, us it, tell us it's invalid. Otherwise it's going to pull out the major, minor, and patch versions, depending on how many uh, parts we've got. So let's give it a test. So we're going to echo uh, 0.017. We'll pipe it into uh, the, the cargo build tool, which is going to run that file. And let's see what it prints out. So you can see uh, it's actually installing a bunch of packages uh, for, for Rust. And then it will split the string. And just remember, every time you run one of these, the first time you run it, it's going to install the packages. And then after that, it's installed. It's not going to need to do that. As you see, it works. It pulls out 0 as the major version, 0 also the minor version, and then 17 as the patch version. How about if we do it for another one? So let's do just 4.4. And so you can see this time it just pulls out the major and minor versions. So, so far, so good. So we've got a Python and we've got our uh, Rust. How are we going to glue them together? Uh, so remember, we're going to use JQ to do this. And so we're going to pipe the uh, Python uh, t command into, t into a, a t command that has uh, that adds in the JQ uh, pantry. And so first time we run it, it's going to download that. And then it's going to call JQ and pull out dot version. 
And so you can see there it prints it, uh, prints it out to the screen. Now let's update that command to pipe the string into our Rust script. So we just go up and we'll add it in. And so you can see now it's actually printing out the actual Python version that's gone through from Python to JQ and then all the way over to Rust on the far side. Uh, and then finally, we can choose to make it all inferred and so we get a bit of a smaller command. And so that's pretty cool, right? So in this video, we've learned how to pipe together Python, JQ and Rust inside a t.xyz sandbox. We haven't installed anything on our computer except for t. Everything else is living inside there. So if you found the video useful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. If you have ideas for anything else that I should cover, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.